Welcome to our walk and talk here at Form Next 2021. Our today's topic is building and architecture. And I have an appointment with Dr. Philipp Rosendahl of Technical University Darmstadt. He is network manager of Beam and a true expert in building and architecture with additive manufacturing technologies. Hi, Philipp. Hello, good morning. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine. Um, you have some nice um, displays here where you're showing the latest technologies in building and architecture. That really much looks like a wasp nest, right? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> what and is it? In, in fact, it's inspired by the construction principle that these insects use uh -huh. to build their hives or nests. What the wasps do is they use locally the earth and the earthen materials they find and assemble them layer-wise into their hive. And that's what we're mimicking here. So we're using robotics, automatic construction to layer by layer assemble a building, an entire building, including the roof, from earthen and locally sourced materials. We basically dig a hole and then build this entire building from it. So you bring the 3D printer, so to say, to the spot where the building shall be standing in the future. Absolutely. And you're processing it there, right? Yes. And that's a big topic in construction and engineering and architecture, obviously, because the long ways of transportation of our materials is what really harm our CO2 to footprint. So if we're able to locally source these heavy materials that otherwise require a lot of fuel and everything to transport them, then we're able to build very efficiently with very little impact on the environment. The funny thing is, uh, walking around Form Next, most of the exhibits are very tiny uh, um, products that are printed in 3D printers. Yours here on the booth are enormous, they're huge. And uh, even more so, the building Uh, the buildings that you can erase with that kind of material. Uh, I guess that is only something small that you brought to, to Frankfurt. How, how big can that be in real life? This, what we see here, is just a wall section, um, as you can imagine. You can imagine the radius of the hive that we could build here. So it have a diameter, diameter of about 10 meters and it has a roof. It's an entire hive that we can build. So my next question would be, can you build an entire house uh, or building with that? Or where are the limits of that technology? That's a very tricky question and a very good question. <laughs> of course, there are ways to address this, but a difficult task in 3D printing an entire house is always the ceiling and the roof. Okay, why? Um, because you can imagine that if we want to print horizontally and we have no support material below, everything will collapse. So okay. we have to find, first of all, methods of layering diagonally. Um, that is, for example, something we do here. Or we have to pre-produce certain beams or structural elements that would support the ceiling. And this is something we see over here. Okay, so that is a beam? That is a beam that could support a ceiling. Uh -huh. What you see here is printed in sections, a hollow cross section okay. of concrete. Concrete is a material that is really strong when it's compressed, yeah. but it's quite weak when it gets under tension. So it would develop cracks. And then um, maybe I've seen this at bridges. They yeah. sometimes have cracks down yeah. here. So how we try to solve this is because we can print hollow cross sections now, we can pre-stress them. So we use this metal rod yeah. to compress the entire concrete beam. So once I push on top of this, yeah. normally, the bottom side would experience tension, would get stretched. But because we compress the entire thing, even if I step on top of it, the bottom side still stays under compression, which means concrete really harnesses its strength. Okay. How durable is that? Because in, in building, um, it is always a matter of, of centuries. So people are not building for today and next year, so it shall be for centuries. How durable is that kind of construction work that you are working on? It is certainly a topic of research to ex explore this kind of durability because you see we have different types of cross sections here. Um, if you have wind loading on the building, maybe even an earthquake, these would slide against each other and maybe damage the material over time. But that is where pre 3D printing has a very unique advantage because we're now building sections for this kind of beam. So we're able to disassemble it and reuse the material. It's something that we display here. It's also something that we display over here. So this is a, a feasibility study, a study that explores a way to sustainably manufacture a building. We have a similar concept as over in this 
um, sample. It's we use the concrete that you see on the inside here yeah. only where the beam is compressed when someone walks on it. So the concrete is used exactly where it's strong. On the other hand, the tension side where the material is stretched, we use a steel cable because steel is an excellent material to transfer the tensile loads. That exhibit already looks much more complicated than the other ones. Um, these are rather easy to understand, but that is uh, rocket science to me at least. <laughs> um, so my next question would be um, the construction companies uh, which are using that kind of technologies. Um, are they existing already? Uh, are there companies trying to work with that materials? Or is it still um, a university project uh, where you need to find companies uh, working with that? You can imagine that the big struggle that additive manufacturing has in general and just as much in the construction sector is typically the business case. Because robotic manufacturing, everything is expensive, we have to um, take care of these details, um, it's difficult. So it is very much still at the research stage, but there are the first examples that we can already visit today, if you like, uh, where companies actually employing, employing this technology to print entire products that you could buy today. Okay, and the pure opposite to that rocket science topic here is an exhibit that is standing right behind you. And I will come around to, because I want to see that big uh, block of earth. <laughs> 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 that block of earth isn't sophisticated at all, but it is a 3D printed, right? It is. It's rough and dirty, but it is a technique of additive manufacturing. We call this a rammed earth wall. Rammed earth is a technology that we have built with for ages. It's basically clay. It's an earthen material. It has excellent properties in terms of thermal insulation, in terms of load bearing capacity. It's a really good material, but we haven't been using it much uh, because we had things like concrete. But now sustainability is a big topic in society. We're witnessing scarcity of building materials. Sands are rare. Concrete has a tremendous CO2 footprint. So we're going back to natural materials. And that's what we're exploring here. We're using the advances that we had in construction and in engineering and in automation in order to automate the process of assembling walls from locally sourced and very sustainable materials such as this clay wall. Um, similar to what you explained to me uh, with the wasp nest in the very beginning, um, you do print or produce those blocks right on the, se on, on the spot where the building shall be erased, right? That's exactly right. You could imagine that transporting this piece, it's <laughs> about a meter high, 250 in length, it's two and a half tons. Ooh. And that's where much of the CO2 footprint in construction comes from because we have to transport very heavy materials over quite some distances. So if you can change this entire process and rethink building and build and use the materials where we want to build locally, then we have a much more sustainable economy. I understand. I think that this doesn't really look like a 3D um, uh, D printed uh, material, but there is another exhibit right beside of it, which really looks 3D printed, but it's a completely different topic. Let's go there. We're sitting on those uh, two cozy uh, benches uh, and with a table uh, where you can eat, where you can drink, where you can play cards. Uh, so in comparison to other benches and tables, nothing new. But this is 3D printed, right? It is. And it is what I have promised you before is that 3D printing in construction and architecture is not just research. This is by a German company called Rösa. They are printing these open space furnitures. Uh, which typically, if you would cast them in concrete, require a lot of handicraft, a lot of craftsmanship, because you need complicated formwork. Now with 3D printers, we can print a piece like this in hours, and it looks beautiful, I think. Uh, the company is not trying to hide the technology that was used to produce it, and instead use it as a design feature, which is very interesting in architecture, because, um, of course, architects want to express something. and. We had this long-standing trend in construction that you want to see how your building transfers the loads. For instance, 
from the roof into the floor. We typically see columns, we see the diagonal stiffeners in bridges. Form follows function is what we call it. And now we have design that resembles and that shows you, that tells you the story of how the product was made. And I think it's a similar trend that we all, um, also see, for example, in furniture, that we see in automotive technologies where people want to see the sustainability of their product. They want to be proud uh, of what they bought uh, and they want to show it to the outside world. I think this is a um, comparable strategy, right? I, I totally agree. And it goes even beyond that. We have not only these uh, ventures that are printed today, we have an entire building, a uh, residential building that a family can live in, printed in this type of technology. The company is called Perry and they're doing the same, they're taking the same approach. They're not hiding the technology, instead they're really showcasing it. Uh, it looks fascinating. Um, you said it takes some hours to print that. Um, how many hours do we need to have a product like this? Because um, um, I can imagine that 3D printing processes uh, in serial production are a drawback because it takes a quite long time. But in comparison to, to traditional building technologies, is that quicker? It is quicker and it's hard to imagine if we think about typical applications in um, say mechanical engineering or the automotive industry where they produce a lot of parts at a rapid speed. That is not the business case of construction. In construction, we're thinking of individualized parts. Architects express themselves in, in the designs of the houses that they do. Theoretically, every house that we build could be different. And then you need unique solutions for that. You need the form work. You need to adjust for that. If we use a computer model and translate that directly into a printing process, a process like this is much faster, in fact, to build the entire house than with traditional technologies. Mm -hmm. And building houses, building uh, objects like this is not only a matter of, um, of building materials like concrete, but also glass. And I've seen quite an exciting exhibit here on your booth. Let's go there. Very happy to show you. So in this glass exhibit, one could think that you are really printing glass, but you don't, right? In fact, we are printing glass and it's something I'm really excited about. What exactly is the part that you have been working on and what are you demonstrating here? So the example that we're showing here is a so-called flip desk. It's a su suspended desk that we hang from the ceiling, but it's really just an example of something we want to do with printed glass as a uh, architectural and structural application. Problem with glass is it's a really nice material. It's super emotional. You can look through it. We use it as isolation in our buildings. Big trends in terms of sustainability and our facades are coming, becoming more transparent. In fact, if you think about the Messeturm here in Frankfurt, it has this new entrance hall with huge glass windows. I think with 12 meters height, right? <laughs> maybe even bigger than that. Uh -huh. Now, you want to co connect these huge glass panes to some sort of substructure. And when we do that, uh, we need to drill through the glass, glue the glass to something. That's structurally quite a big problem because, first of all, when we drill through it and we put a bolt through, we create a thermal bridge. In terms of sustainability and thermal performance, it's not very, very good for us. Um, if we glue something on top of the glass, then we have the interlayer, the, the glued layer, yeah. as the weakest link in our construction. So any kind of thermal deformation or wind load deformation will start cracking our, our connection. So what we try to do is we weld glass onto glass, print, 3D print, um, this glass cone that is shown here on top of a flat piece of glass that could be a window pane. The big advantage of this is you, after the printing process, have one piece of glass. It's really one structure, so you haven't harmed it in terms of micro cracking after drilling. You haven't created a thermal bridge, uh -huh. but you really have created an entire structural connection, purely transparent. And why don't you glue that onto the glass? Would be a nice idea right, uh, as well, right? It looks nice, and we even have transparent adhesives. But structurally, it's a big disadvantage to have the adhesive. 
Um, I think you have may maybe imagine that yourself. If you fix something at home and you glue things together, where will it fail next time when the thing breaks again? In the seam. In the seam, exactly. And that's what's happened in construction too. Um, when we glue things together, that's the weakest link, link in our entire construction. And that's why we're trying to avoid it. So that is really exciting. I would have never expected to see a glass application for 3D printing. So that is really exciting to me. Thank you so much, Philip, for your insights into uh, latest technologies in AM in building and architecture. Thank you very much. <laughs> and thank you for watching and see you next time at our Walk and Talk here at Form Next 2020. 21.